what else can we be doing as individuals and churches to engage with the fifth mark of mission? Gus Speth has said, I used to think that the top environmental problems were biodiversity loss, ecosystem collapse and climate change. I thought that 30 years of good science could address these problems. I was wrong. The top environmental problems are selfishness, greed and apathy. And to deal with these, we need a cultural and spiritual transformation. And we scientists don't know how to do that. But the church does. Spiritual and cultural transformation is what the church is supposed to be all about. As I've reflected on this, I feel that what we need more than anything is a heart or mind level change to change the way we see the world and relate to it in our deepest being. Many people, especially in the West, have an extractive worldview, one where we use the world and we take from it. It's particularly prevalent in societies whose wealth is derived from an economy based on extraction and exploitation. But there are other worldviews, including within the Anglican Communion. Indigenous Christians across the communion share a worldview that's about relationship. So indigenous Maori and Pacific peoples understand creation as inherently unified with a profound interconnection amongst everything that exists. Plants, animals, rivers, hills, all have intrinsic value and are to be respected. Human beings are positioned in creation, not as supreme masters over the earth community, but as interdependent members of the earth community. This understanding, they say, requires us to broaden our gaze beyond our anthropocentric concerns, to include consideration of all living entities in everything we do. This relational worldview is shared by other indigenous Anglicans in Africa, the Amazon and the Arctic. Kinship and connection with God's good earth, discerning, protecting and joying in creation's song of praise and hearing her groans are deeply biblical ideas. I think we need so very much to turn away from or repent of a mentality of extraction and embrace one of relationship for the sake of God's good earth and our brothers and sisters across the world. Only when we love the world wholeheartedly as God does, only when we treasure it and understand our place in it and know our profound interconnectedness with all its creatures and understand our dependence on its bounty, only then will we care enough to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth, the fifth Anglican mark of mission. And to love it, we have to know it. We need to connect and reconnect with our world over and over. We need to marvel at its wonders and the sheer miracle of it all. As the poet Mary Oliver has written, the multiplicity of forms, the hummingbird, the fox, the raven, the sparrowhawk, the otter, the dragonfly, the water lily, and so on and on. It must be a great disappointment to God if we are not dazzled at least 10 times a day. <laughs>